cannot guess what I am doing right now. Uh, uh wait, 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 wait. It's on, I'm, it's on the tip of my tongue. Maybe you're... Maybe coloring. There you go. That's right. As always. Yay. Well, today Dave's coming over. And um, we've had some questions about Val's health. And I know that we talk about it almost all the time. But I think there's a lot of confusion as to what's really going on and why we don't want to go to urgent care and things like that. So I want to discuss that at length. I actually sent a, a, put an, a message down for somebody who's been asking about it. Um, since I've met Val, Val has, has been sick. She's always had um, problems with her stomach. And um, I got her onto my health care and we spent just so much time trying to uh, figure out what's going on. We would go from doctor to doctor trying to... Uh, to get answers and I've learned a long time ago those of you who are out of the country uh, um, American health system is um, do I want to say screwed up but uh, I would say not the best yeah okay it's not the best <laughs> um, uh, when I was a human resource manager I was in charge of the health care uh, at my company and um, I used to really put the screws to them because um, it, it was so bad. It's just so bad trying to get treated. But uh, Val has had um, see, uh, um, a few surgeries on her stomach before I met her. She had one surgery uh, just the first year that I had been with her to remove some scar tissue that she got from endometriosis mm -hmm. that she had uh, all around her uh, uterus and she had a hysterectomy and that went undiagnosed it went undiagnosed to get, by doctors why because the doctors kind of do the minimum that they have to do in fact the insurance companies pay them to, to do as little as possible so if you want to get something done and you're not getting an answer you have to continue to push and the more you push the more they don't want to work with you which it's you know a nice catch-22 <laughs> So Val's condition can turn, continue to get worse. And in the meantime, she's also uh, been uh, diagnosed with uh, bipolar disorder and um, um, OCD and other problems that she's getting medication for, which, which could and usually does make the situation worse. And we had continuously work with uh, that doctor to try to get medications that weren't gonna make her sicker and she she went to gastroenterologist who some of them had actually faked some of our um, her results which was very weird they but it they happened faked a test. they faked the test um she had been diagnosed with gas, gas gastroparesis gastroparesis then they undiagnosed her she had been tested for uh ibs uh, ibsd all, all the Crohn's disease, a whole bunch of stuff, and, and they didn't come back with anything. During all of this, I kept saying, uh, she's, had, she's had issues with um, scar tissue uh, continuously growing. Could that be the problem? And we would always get the, maybe, but we're not going to check for it. Right? Or no, would be the answer, because they didn't want to do it. That would mean surgery, and they were going to avoid that at all cost. So... We did this for years until she finally got approved for her gastric sleeve. She went to a doctor out of the network who was being paid by our network. And he doesn't have anything, uh, anybody paying him not to do stuff. And the guy went out of his way and looked to see if he had, she had um, scar tissue. And she had tons, she had tons of scar tissue. And um, he removed as much as he could reach because he wasn't really in that area. He moved as much as he could, and um, she got better. But the doctor said there's a ton more in there that he couldn't get to, and it needed to be removed. Now, we don't know if that information got back to our doctor. We keep asking, but we never get an answer. But if she goes to urgent care with, uh, with this, they, they won't treat her because they don't know what it is. Uh, they decided years ago that she's a hypochondriac, or she's uh, there just to get pain meds and they won't give her anymore so that's where we're at so going to urgent care going to emergency is just going to cost us money hours spent 
um, on that on x-rays or tests or blood tests that she's already had and then they will tell us to go home we would get nothing done and we have our regular doctor dr. Wrigley who knows my history knows everything about me is very understanding and he is willing to work with us he knows I'm not a hypochondriac or a drug there for drugs so that's why we wait for appointments to see him and um, if it's something that he can't fix then he refers us to a specialist instead of going to urgent care or, or emergency and not getting anything done so, yeah and I am very sensitive to medications I have a long list of medications that I'm allergic to so and a long list of medications that I am not allowed to take due to kidney disease, liver disease, and my gastric sleeve surgery. So those are the reasons why I can't just go to the store and buy over-the-counter medications. Yeah, she can't take Imodium. And yeah. in fact, the doctor supposedly is waiting for these tests to come back before giving any kind of diagnosis or treating, treat her for anything. And then he went on vacation, which we don't, you know, the guy can have a vacation, it's June. But it, this is where we're at. We're waiting for him. So, go to urgent care. Uh, we would only go to urgent care if she's in severe pain and we, we needed some pain meds. And I'm not getting dehydrated. I am constantly drinking. Yeah. Um, so, I, I know what to do in this situation. I've been through it enough times. So, I know I need to be drinking a lot of fluids. So, all's good. <laughs> That's the story and we're sticking to okay, it. Okay, so um, we're playing with a new camera. I got Dave here, over here and we're, we're brainstorming about what to do with our business. We have all kinds of things that we can do. We're, we're creating a studio upstairs. Uh, and right now I'm playing with this camera. And um, so we're talking about we're going to have a studio upstairs it's not just going to be a video studio it's going to be a sound um, studio a sound studio and of course we're going to drag uh, Samantha into this and uh, I can't we can't play any of the songs that Sa uh, Samantha is doing because none they're all at this point um, owned by other people so none of them are original, but uh, she does some incredible co uh, um, covers. Covers. So we're going to do that, and we may actually put a whole channel together just for that. We're definitely going to put the music out on to um, um, what is it called? iTunes. iTunes, and she's already on iTunes. Uh, SoundCloud. She's on SoundCloud. Yes. So, if you want to find, what is it under, if anybody is interested in hearing her? Uh, it is under Samantha Lourdes. Samantha Lourdes. L-O-U-R-D-E-S. Lourdes, France. Right. Um, so, if anybody wants to hear Samantha, which is um, Dave's daughter, she's incredible. She's absolutely incredible. She's, she's sung with our band quite a few times, and uh, she's done some incredible covers. And uh, her music's great, and we want to do some more recording with her. And um, yeah, we're gonna do all kinds of stuff. We may create a whole channel. We might do some videos. Yeah. And uh, that'll be great. So. Dave's gonna learn bass. Stand up bass, double bass. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Whatever works. And uh, yeah, we're gonna have a good time, and we're gonna make some money. We're working on things. For our company, and uh, our company is going to do, I think, more than anything, it's going to be video videography and uh, things like that. But we're going to do other things as well, as as we have plenty of equipment to do audio recording, and we can do videos, music videos. We're going to do a lot of stuff, and um, of course, we're going to do some more brew bastards. 
Right on. We're gonna do some more brew bastards. Eventually. No, we're gonna do it soon. We're gonna you, do five gallons. Well, not just, the, uh, we were going to, to brew. In fact, Dave brought all of his brewing equipment, but then we decided to play with the, with the toys that we have. We've got a lot of toys that we're playing with. Um, our sound equipment and our video equipment. And, um, but uh, I think the next thing that we need to do is go to a beer fest somewhere, for sure. Okay guys, so that's it for today. We're still trying to get used to the camera, so it's, it's, we're not doing a great job with it right now, but I'll, we're still working on it. So I hope you like something that we did. Give us a thumbs up if you liked anything you saw. Uh, give us a shout out or um, uh, share or don't forget to subscribe and leave us a message or whatever. But uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Talk to you later. Bye.